Welcome to my laptop. Today we are going to discuss most important anti-cancer drug and that is the rituximab or you can say anti-CD20 antibodies. So basically we can use the different monoclonal antibodies in the treatment of the cancer. So one of them will be the rituximab. Okay. In this lecture we will discuss that how rituximab will be used in the uh, destructions of the cancer cell as well as in different autoimmune uh, diseases. So let's start. First of all, we will discuss the most important mechanism of the rituximab. So the cells that are susceptible by the rituximab or you can say anti-CG20 antibodies will be the B cells. Okay, if you see here, this is the structures of the B cells, means B lymphocytes, lymphocytes, okay. So actually you will see the two types of the lymphocytes, B lymphocytes and the T lymphocytes. So B lymphocytes ultimately convert into the plasma cell and ultimately form the different antibodies, okay. That's the most important thing. Uh, B cell form the plasma cells and from the plasma cells you will see ultimately formations of the antibodies okay that is the normal process that actually happens in our body okay so when you see the unlimited proliferations of the b cells then it can be in the form of the cancer okay so our main focus is to stop the replications or the destructions of the B cells that are actually abnormal. Okay. So in this case, we give the rituximab. Okay. And these are basically the monoclonal antibodies. These are basically monoclonal antibodies. So we will destroy the B cells with the help of the antibodies okay so first of all the b cells have antigens and that is the cd20 cd20 antigens okay now when someone take the rituximab through the iv intravenous route then what will happen then these antibodies okay here are basically the antibodies that are basically the rituximab. Okay. These are basically monoclonal antibodies rituximab. And these rituximab will bind to the antigen CG20 that are present on the B cells. Okay. And after that you will see the three processes can happen after the attachment of the antibodies to the CG20 and this is basically the rituximab okay so now after the attachment of the antibodies to the antigen now this B cell has been opsonized by the antibodies okay after that you will see here is the first case here is the antibodies monoclonal antibodies okay that are actually attached to the CD20, CD20 antigen and here is the again B cells, B cells. Now neut neutrophils and the natural killer cells detect the B cells having antibodies, ultimate or you can say detect the opsonized B cells, B lymphocyte, okay. So if you see here that the neutrophil and the neutrophil or you can say natural killer cells, okay, neutrophil or you can say natural killer cell detect the opsonized B lymphocytes, okay, and with the help of the receptor because these cells have receptor and that is FCR, FC receptor. 
Now this FC receptor will bind to the antibodies and ultimately this whole process result in the destructions of the B lymphocytes. And that is actually, this process is actually called the antibody dependent. Antibody dependent. Antibody dependent. Cell mediated. Cell mediated lysis. Okay. So, in the presence of the antibodies, that is why it is called antibody dependent. And the cell mediated. Now, these cells, neutrophils and the natural killer cells will destroy the B cells. Okay. So, that process is actually called the antibody dependent cell mediated lysis of the B cell. So, ultimately, we can destroy the uh, B lymphocytes. Okay. Next case, if you see again that this is the monoclonal antibodies, rituximab, okay, that actually bind to the CD20, okay. And in this case, you will see these opsonized B cells will activate the complement system, will activate the complement system. And the complement system is actually, you will see the different proteins actually present in our blood. Now, due to the activations of the complement system in our blood, then ultimately you will see the formations of the hole. Formations of the hole in the B cells. Okay. Now you see, due to the com complement system, you will see the formations of the hole. And due to the formations of the hole, due to the complement, then ultimately this cell will go toward the lysis. Lysis. Now, this cell, because the different materials will come from the B lymphocytes. Okay. And this lysis of the B cells will be called the complement, complement mediated lysis of the B cells. Okay. And last, most important, here is again the monoclonal antibodies. Okay. Now, that will attach to the CD again 20 antigen and now the direct attachment of the antibodies to the CD20 will ultimately direct death of the cell and that will be the apoptosis. Programmed cell that will be happens in this case. Now you will see the three mechanisms through which the B cells can be destroyed by the attachment of the monoclonal antibodies rotoxibab. First one is the antibody dependent cell mediated lysis, complement mediated lysis and the directive apoptosis of the B cell. So if we discuss the clinical uses, so most important rotoxibab will be used in the non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Okay, that's the most important thing. These will be non-Hodgkin lymphoma because in this cell we just in this case we just have to destroy the b cells and that is actually achieved by the using of the rituximab basically these are basically antibodies okay you can also use this in the chronic lymphocytic leukemia because you will see the proliferation of the b cells and we just have to stop the proliferation of the uh, b cells so this can also be used in the chronic lymphocytic leukemia that is a cancer blood cancer okay and this can also be used in different autoimmune conditions but why why these drugs can be used in the autoimmune conditions because as we have discussed in the normal process B cells, B lymphocytes convert into the plasma cell and the plasma cells ultimately form the antibodies. So, when we stop the or destroy the B cell, then you will see there is no production of the antibodies. And in the autoimmune conditions, you will see the antibodies actually the main factor that actually disturb the mechanism in our body. When there is no B cell, there is no antibodies and there is no disturbance that actually happens due to the antibodies will not happen in your body. So here are basically, you can use the rituximab in the cancer as well as in the different autoimmune conditions. So if we discuss the different adverse effects, so most important adverse effect that is the infusion related reaction. Infusion reactions, because these drugs actually given by the IV intravenous routes. 
so that's the most important complication you can also see the mucocutaneous mucocutaneous reaction in this case mucous membrane and the cutaneous will be the skin you will see the steve johnson syndrome you can see the different dermatitis and the para uh, neoplastic pam figures these are basically fall in the mucocutaneous reaction or you can see the pml pml that is the most important adverse effect of the rituximab or you can say anti cg20 so progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy you will see the different focal point in the uh, mri uh, of the brain that is the progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy and you can also see the uh, tls that will be the tumor lysis syndrome because you will see the destructions of the tumor cells okay now due to the destruction of the uh, tumor cells you will see the different electrolytes will start raising due to the lysis of the cell so electrolytes will like sodium uh, potassium will start increasing but the important point the calcium will start decreasing okay so that is the most important uh, complications or the adverse effect of the rituximab if we discuss the most important uh, warning so rituximab can activate the hepatitis b virus okay that is reactivation of hepatitis b virus if someone affected by the hepatitis b in the past then what will happen then when that person take the rituximab then there is a chances of the activations of the hepatitis b because hepatitis doesn't completely eliminate in our body they become inactive in our body and when the conditions given to the hepatitis b then that virus can again become activated in our body so that is the most important stimulus will be the uh, rituximab usage and you will see you will take the other medications along with the rituximab and that is the antihistamine antihistamine or you can take the acetaminophen okay that is uh, you will take these drugs along with the rituximab okay and please please do not use the cisplatin along with the rituximab because that will create the nephrotoxicity that is the most important thing please do not use cisplatin along with the rituximab because that will create the uh, nephrotoxicity so here are basically the different warning sign activation of the hepatitis b uses of the different medications and uh, do not use any uh, cisplatin along with the rituximab so this is all about the rituximab which is the monoclonal antibody if you still have any question you may ask in the comment section thank you so much